All right, we are live. I'm back here with another Infinite Layers. Today, I'm joined by Ivan from K3 and K3 Labs. Ivan, do you want to give us a quick introduction to yourself and to K3, and then we'll dive right in? Yeah, sure. So my name is Ivan. I'm the CTO of K3. I've been in this space for, for some time already, trying to build the decentralized future that we all like. And uh, hopefully, K3 brings that entire idea a bit closer to the regular user by us enabling end users and consumers really uh, tapping in directly into the Web3 and Web2 connections and building everything much, much easier with a drag and drop, no code um, platform that allows you to actually uh, do that. I have a ton of questions and we're going to dive into some of those questions. But first, I would love to know how you got into Web3 and how you became a founder and what led you to build uh, your own company, K3. Yeah, so I, I've been in, Bit, let's say in in blockchain for quite some time while Bitcoin was the only coin on the coin market cap, even before coin market cap existed. And we were just sending Bitcoin uh, back and forth uh, between our friends and playing Satoshi dice. And it kind of evolved by, um, by this other guy from Russia called uh, Vitalik. And he introduced this really amazing platform called Ethereum on which you could build smart contracts and a bit more complex uh, solutions, which are kind of during complete uh, code executions, which kind of added a bit more functionality to the entire decentralized uh, world. And then of course, on top of that DeFi products started to appear in the DeFi summer and so on. And um, I had a couple of companies that I built. I consulted in the space. I built my own products. I even co-founded a company before that called uh, Trustwap. Uh, we had one of the bigger DeFi uh, solutions uh, that allowed uh, founders to vest tokens, so create vesting contracts. And actually, we were the one, the first inventors of liquidity locks on Uniswap. So you could actually not get rocked on Uniswap. So I kind of grew or my experience kind of grew uh, as the industry became more and more mature. And I don't think we are still in the maturity uh, uh, age. I think we're still like in the toddler age where you just like go around and bump your head into uh, arm uh, into chairs and tables and <laughs> walls and so on. And you slowly learn what not to do, what to touch and what not to touch. Um, so kind of through that experience, uh, came came to K3 because a lot of our customers and also the users that I know in the industry, they're trying to build something, but they're like, ah, I don't know, like smart contracts, solidity, and now like every single blockchain has a different development language. I don't want to learn solidity. I don't want to learn move. I don't want to learn Rust specifically for Solana. And then you add MetaMask, which is kind of a cool product from the 20s. But it's, if I'm honest, pretty bad uh, for, the, for the three years of the industry that has progressed. Because let's take my mom and dad, for example. If you have to tell them, like, hey, send a transaction, like they have no idea what's gas, mm -hmm. uh, how that translates into Ethereum. What if the transaction gets stuck? Can they resend it or send it wrong? So those are still all the problems that the industry is facing every day. And our platform kind of tries to solve that, at least by moving one step forward and allowing abstraction wallets and not in the form, like technical form that you see here, but it will allow you to use transactions, to process transactions, interact with the blockchain without actually knowing much about like what's gas, what's your address, uh, how do you invoke a smart contract function, how do you read a smart contract function. It will pretty much allow you to work with Web2 and Web3 if you have a small technical knowledge already of interacting and building things in like a Zapier style experience, which is mm. really popular these days. Yeah. And yeah, that's kind of the idea. And we were, we are just basically another iteration and trying to make things a bit better. Awesome. I have a lot of questions about specifics there that I can dive into once you kind of dive into your presentation, but maybe the presentation that you're going to go into will probably answer 
some of the questions so I don't uh, repeat myself. But do you want to kind of dive into that now and then we can uh, continue taking it after that? Sure, of course. Uh, let me just share my screen. Here. And it sounds like essentially you're you're essentially trying to provide a much better like UX for a lot of the things that people are used to not having a good UX for doing. Or maybe yeah. make, you know, lowering the barrier to entry for, for people to be able to, to do things that weren't maybe possible before. Exactly. So it, it will, or ideally, it is a consumer-facing uh, product for regular SMBs. And we, we have like two cases, which is like SMBs and enterprises, uh, which want to do something on, on chain, but necessarily don't want to hire a whole team of Solidity developers, because then you have like this bunch of weird guys that know MetaMask and a specific Solidity language that you don't know what to do in the company. But if you have existing developers, they will really easily be able to use this platform. So you the, the barrier to entry from Web2 to Web3 in, in our case, with our platform, I would say is super, super low. There is no learning curve needed there. And then there is also the DeFi native people that will enjoy the automation that our platform brings, like automated uh, Uniswap trades, automated liquidity claims, reward claims, uh, automated vesting claims, and so on. So there are a lot of if then then these uh, use cases are possible on the on the platform. Awesome. Yeah. So this is the this is the app itself here that we're looking at. Yeah, so let me go uh, into this. So you're kind of presented by the Discover page where you can quickly get onboarded on the platform and learn about uh, how to build your first workflows. We kind of support two different types, one we call the design and the other one we call the deploy. Now, the deploy kind of is dedicated to more tech-savvy people and the, uh, the ones that already know how to write Rust code. Uh, so I'll keep that for the end and I'll jump straight into the design because this is what we think is the flagship feature of the platform. And if I just go into there, uh, you, will see, uh, you will see our workplace here that you can use to build something. So it's quite easy. Uh, to, to get started. So everything starts with, a, uh, with a, what we call a trigger. So mm. trigger allows you to kind of kickstart your workflow. And it, it allows you to do a couple of things. It can be scheduled based on some sort of a predefined frequency. It can fetch smart contract uh, uh, interactions and events. Like for example, if I added in a NFT smart contract, you will see that it will automatically return all the methods that I can kind of hook into. Like, for example, if I pick um, ownership transfer, for example. So if I clicked OK here, this means that this entire workflow that I will create will kickstart if an ownership transfer has happened on this smart contract. And this is quite an interesting security feature because if an ownership transfer has happened on the smart contract that you own without your approval or without you knowing, this is a pretty, pretty bad deal. So if you, if you can hook up into this contract and simply, for example, send yourself a telegram alert and say ownership transfer detected warning and add the, the actual event so you can see the data from the from the trigger from the ownership transfer is available to me here to use in this message in the Telegram, and I can say like new owner, and I click OK. So when this ownership transfer happens on the smart contract, I'll get a Telegram message and I can act. I can even do it like that's like kind of the simple security feature, but I can do it even better. I could even say, OK, if this happened, then please uh, write to a smart contract which means invoke a function and I will pick a, um, okay, I cannot pick here. I would have to check it. I would have to change the teams, but in this case, I would be able to immediately lock, for example, if this was an ERC-20 contract, I would immediately be able to lock. Uh, this is so cool. 
So in, in theory, so let me just refresh your screen so I get my wallet back. Um, but in theory, so imagine a security feature where an ownership has un, uh, unauthorized, uh, in an un unauthorized way has been changed. This has been detected by our system and immediately froze all token transfers. So this is a pretty cool feature, but I think I can do it even, even better for you. Um, okay, let me just open all, this, all these actions that we have on the left side. So the, mid, the, the workflow part we call automation and the actions that we have on the left side we call actions. As you can see, I can do a lot of things. Like for example, I can call an API and use that data into smart contracts. I can fetch market data, for example, read the current Bitcoin price and so on. Like if I wrote BTC here, I get Bitcoin price and I can use it in the further contracts. I can, uh, for example, pull in a wallet component and then, for example, fetch all my token balances. I have a MetaMask here uh, that I will just open up. Maybe it has something, maybe it doesn't, but I'll post an address in here just to show you. This would fetch, this would fetch all the tokens in case I want to use it. Uh, then we have, uh, for example, conditional uh, operations like if and transform. Like if on a specific component uh, returns a result and I have to use this in the workflow later on. We have transform that allows you data manipulations like uh, string operations, mathematical operations, and so on. Then we have the Uniswap uh, automatic trading. Like if I pick my wallet, I could uh, I could execute a trade based on the tokens that I have. Like for example, I'll add an example here, and then I'll jump into a eigenlayer specific uh, use case. For example, Uniswap you probably know doesn't allow you to have limit orders. So if you say like, okay, I have a bunch of tokens and if it hits a dollar price of $1, please sell my tokens. You cannot do that on Uniswap. But with us, you can easily go into the market data and uh, pull in, for example, let's go Eigen. If I pull, pull in Eigen price, I will see it's currently trading at 2.45 and I can say if, uh, the eigen sorry I have to refresh this so if the eigen price is uh, above sorry I have to click here okay. save and then I can say if the eigen USD price is like I said mm. uh, is greater than three dollars then not necessarily that I would want to but I can set a limit order then to sell. Uh, my now the wallet doesn't have item price, but just for right, the right. Sake of the demo, it would in this case execute the 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 trade to to sell item price at three dollars. So it allows you to create a lot of different uh, use cases, and you can also pick one of the predefined use cases via a template template picker here that we have prepared for you because we know not all of. Uh, Let's say people in the DeFi space are DeFi uh, DJs, as they call them. So we give them a bit of inspiration on, for example, how to do wallet balance reporting. If I wanted to do a daily reporting on my uh, on my assets, which is really good for financial reporting, or for example, token activity reporting, or um, or the trades that I mentioned before. But what I actually wanted to show you here is a more uh, a demo more specific to the uh, to the eigenlayer community. But before that, do you have any questions that I can answer before that? No, this is really great. I think it's um, a good example of an actual application paired with a protocol. And I think there's a lot of discussion often right now about should teams and new companies and founders build at the app layer um, or should they build actual protocols but i think mm. in, in the reality you have to have both you can obviously build products on top of existing smart contracts but i think the true differentiators that we're seeing in the market poly market warpcast and farcaster and um, a lot of these teams that are building differentiating products actually need to build both they need to build out differentiating features on the back end 
and then build out the application and then they pair those together. And then obviously with K3, um, I'm going to learn more about it, but I'm assuming that people can also leverage the protocol to build out their own front ends as well. Or is it more yeah, just like an app? Exactly. So in the base, in the base of the K3 core is the obviously icon layer and everything is run on the AVS itself. So each of those actions that you see on the left side is a small piece of Rust code that we compile into or recompile, whatever you want to call it, into WebAssembly. And it's then sent over to our operator set. And they take this small piece of code that contains all the information that they need, all the inputs that are going in, all of the environmental variables, of course, encrypted, and they execute that. And based on that, we generate also a ZK proof that kind of proves that the trusted execution environment has not been uh, compromised by the operator itself. And based on that, they're actually then rewarded or slashed if they didn't really uh, play the game nice. Very cool. So in terms of network support, what networks are supported at the moment? So at the moment, we are on pretty much all the major uh, major, if I drag in the smart contract. Like EVM contract. networks? Yeah, all, all the major EVM networks. So we have all the test nets so you guys can play, Polygon, Avalanche. Then we have Stability Protocol, which is a no-gas network, which is targeting more enterprises. And then, of course, Ethereum mm -hmm. but, and, and Base. And we can easily uh, include more, uh, more EVM-based networks. So when I think of um, Zapier, I'm often thinking of different Web2 applications that have integrations. And I, and I think you mentioned some of this before, but if you want to integrate with Slack, with Notion, with email, is that something that you can do as well? Exactly. So like, like I said, so or Telegram, if I, okay. for example, yeah, for example, if I were to pick, I can even just start my, my, uh, my icon layer thing here. So I'll pull in an API that reads Eigenlayers API. And what this does is actually reads my, uh, the amount of rewards that myself as an operator of the Eigenlayer network uh, is supposed to get. So you can see here that the token address, this one is mine. I, I passed it in as the parameter of the API. Uh, the reward is in value amount. So if I click OK, um, I can send myself a Telegram message and say, uh, let's say if I schedule it to 24 hours and I say, okay, please send me the report on how much I can reward I can claim. I can say spending rewards for your operator. And I can say, I can use the variable from before from the API results. As you can see, it's all dynamic and shared through the automation workflow. Like, Zapier, and this would send me a, um, a Telegram message. So I can obviously remove that as well and add email mm -hmm. and do the same and say, uh, you got money at I again and send myself again a message. How does the Telegram that, connection work? Is it like, do you have to authenticate? to Telegram for it to send that, or does it just send a message to the to the handle? Ah, yeah, so no, we, we, we do it in a nicer way. Uh, so we have a K3 bot, uh, and in order to set it up, you see here setup instructions. It's a bit, oh, okay. it's, it, looks, it looks long, but it's actually just, you just uh, message oh, K3 nice. bot with a message, yeah. and it just connects everything together. Wow, this is really cool. I mean, there's just so much that you can can do here. And I think with all of this stuff happening with agents, with um, a lot of the people now getting into trading, you know, that are trying to do more sophisticated things in terms of watching wallets and watching actions that other exactly. people are doing. There's just so much that you can do here. That's exactly what we, 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 we had. Like, we have really good traders that are using the platform already. And they have really creative cases, like for example, whale watching that you just said. They can even front run trades if they wanted to, because all of the entire workflow that we have is on chain based. So it can trigger pretty much fast. I would not say it's as fast as like super performance based sandwich attacks or something like that. Mm -hmm. But if you're 
if you're just like a regular trader and you want to copy your favorite influencer's trade and you know his wallet, you can just load up your wallet with a bit of Ethereum uh, and just uh, set up his wallet as the, as the ERC20 event track and just do the same trade as he does. And I can even show you this in the, um, what I didn't mention in the, and then I'll go to the eigen thing. Uh, so, for example, if I wanted to do a um, interaction with a smart contract, where I, in, on, the, on the start of our conversation, mentioned that we want to make easier for people to interact with the chain, is you will see here. I just pick my wallet, and that's it. So I can just put in an address. Um, it will load. Okay, this is not contract, I guess. Um, this one it is. And you will see if I want to do, so this specifically is a eigenlayer reward smart contract on, uh, on host key network. So it's yours, not ours. And um, you can interact with the functions and read something. So I can, for example, call whew, process claims. So what the process claims does is it will ask the rewards contract to based on on the inputs that I give it and the recipient, which is myself, to claim the reward that me, myself, as the operator of the AVS has occurred uh, during time. And as you can see here, the wallet is inside your UI. You don't have to do anything, like you don't have to connect your MetaMask and it's all automatic. So this is going to be running uh, every day and it's going to automatically uh, take the, the gas fees from your wallet, it will automatically top up your wallet when it gets low and it will process all the transactions. And this is all possible by a partner of ours that uh, is called Cubist. And they are a kind of a custodial solution with like enterprise grade custodial solution. And you can easily create a uh, integration through, through our platform. So if I go into integrations, mm -hmm you will see that I can view integration and see that I have oh, nice. one, one Cubist wallet. And that's pretty much it. Like I just set it up here. If I want to really top it up with more, like to copy the influencers, I can top it up um, with MoonPay directly in Ethereum. And, uh, and it just enables me to build uh, everything together. And maybe just to go back to that case that I wanted to uh, show you is, I'll just drag in a couple of things and I won't even run it, but just to show you in the eigenlayer space, if I'm an operator and I wanted to know the rewards that I'm currently getting is that's your API. So I can get the amount of rewards out and then I would do another read of the API, which would uh, fetch the eigenlayer, uh, another eigenlayer API that would fetch me all the Merkle root information about my, uh, my uh, operator. And it will be able to use that as the input values of the smart contract, right? Um, so if I go to your contract again and process claims, I'm just doing it super fast here, but mm -hmm. I won't trigger it because I, I would have to modify everything here. But basically right. in the claim section, you could uh, add the actual uh, the actual Merkle root information that needs to be done, and as, as a recipient, you would add potentially uh, an address of your treasury mm. wallet. Wow, yeah, you so you can get pretty sophisticated with this stuff. Exactly. So pretty much with this, you can claim your own rewards every day, and and like we said in the end, you can send yourself uh, again an email, and I, I won't even type it, but I'll say uh, right. you paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So what what is the S3 section? Is it that you can uh, connect an S3 bucket and then uh, save files to your bucket, I guess? Yeah, exactly. So that's more for, for enterprise purposes. We have uh, one, of, one of our design partners is, a, um, is handling a lot of financial data and mm -hmm. they, are, uh, they have to process that and S3 is kind of the logical storage for them. So you can pipe in all your data directly into S3 and create buckets. I, I'm trying to talk in simple terms. I, I don't know what the, what the range of the, of the audience here, 
but you can create data entries in the S3 bucket and we'll add more. So we'll add FTP in the, um, in the future so you can deliver yourself files, maybe PDF exports for, for actual financial data and, and so on. So we, everything is, as you can see, we are trying to make everything as consumer friendly and as simple to use. But if you really wanted to go into details, and you wanted to see how your workflow works, I could maybe switch to one of the existing workflows. Um, just to show you how the rest of the platform works is mm -hmm. that you can just open it. Like, for example, this, I assume it's, it says ETH five minutes. I assume it's fetching ETH, uh, Ethereum price every five minutes. You can see all your workflow executions here. You can see all your deployments here that we said. So like I said, each of those small Rust actions is a WebAssembly file that is in the end hosted on IPFS and retrieved. So even if Ktree Lab disappears tomorrow and the company doesn't exist anymore, hopefully not, but um, you will be able to retrieve your uh, files, data and executable binaries from the decentralized network and run, run it again on, on the Eigenlayer network. You can also see the execution logs from the remote operators, if you're into that stuff. And you can do some settings like environmental variables and so on. And as a user, you can obviously see all your executions on, on a really nice dashboard that we are trying to uh, keep as uh, simple, as clean as possible. And everything is payable end of the month with, with your credit card via Stripe so that your uh, CFO doesn't get a headache <laughs> if, you, if you come to him with a MetaMask wallet and say like, look, <laughs> we need Ethereum tokens, we need Link tokens, we need, I don't know, and send that to that guy that develops Solidity in the, in the tech department, he's going to get a headache. So with our platform, hopefully nobody gets a headache and solves uh, a lot of uh, problems that they have both in Web2 and Web3. Absolutely. This is really, really great. I, hadn't, I had not really had a chance to dive in to K3 that much and being able to have you here, the founder kind of diving into it has been really, really awesome. I think that um, when you like look at the broad landscape of crypto applications, there are not that many out there that I would say that excite me or that are useful. But I think this workflow is a proven type of workflow that is very valuable to people already in the web two space. So bringing yeah. it and applying it and, and providing like a really nice UX on top of it has already opened my mind to like a hundred ideas that I, that I want to try out here. So this has been, well, exactly. been really awesome. I couldn't agree more because I think, again, I don't want to like put some, some other projects to shame or whatever, but a lot of projects are made by techies for techies. And although I'm a CTO and I'm a technical person myself, as soon as they see a new blockchain technology coming up and it's like, yeah, just spin this node and run those commands and with this CLI and integrate this SDK, I'm like, man, I'm not reading all of this <laughs> again. So uh, yeah. I don't want to fiddle with all of this. And also myself as a technical person, it's much easier for me to create a workflow here with drag and drop lines versus trying to debug where I went wrong with my Node.js script or uh, if I connected the correct RPC. So all the RPCs, all the connections to blockchains, connections to AVS, uh, the eigenlayer itself, and, and so on, all of this is abstracted away for you in the platform. So as a user, you should uh, have a good experience. But yeah, and there are so many people that complain about there not being enough applications, but every time I talk to a new founder um, that I haven't really gotten to know yet and I start diving into what they're building, I'm very often just surprised at the quality of products that have now started to exist just in the last year or so, to be quite honest, because there wasn't all that much uh, before, you know, before that. I mean, there are a few things here and there, but I think what what you're building with K3, Infinex and DeFi, uh, Warpcast and social, Polymarket and news and prediction markets, and then family wallet and wallets, we now have like a dozen or a few dozen really, really amazing applications that I think just make uh, a lot of sense when someone kind of like actually gets to, to check it out and use it. 
that maybe they they just are not aware of. So I would like to maybe organize and put together like a thread or a list of some of my favorite applications um, and definitely K3 will, will be in there. What do you think about this whole conversation that you kind of hear lately around building at the app layer or building at the protocol layer? And 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 my my thinking at some point was like, yeah, we need more apps. We don't need as many services. And then mm -hmm. I started... Uh, talking to founders that were trying to build applications and and they were often having a hard time building out their idea because the the service didn't exist. So I was like, oh, okay, we need more services too. But I think the what actually is starting to happen is that you need both. You need to literally often build both of those things. So lowering the barrier to entry to building out like verifiable services with Eigenlayer was compelling to me. And that's kind of why I joined to to to, to join Eigenlayer and kind of seeing founders like yourself doing that is really, really cool. But this, this is why we picked Eigenlayer. So to answer to your question, I would maybe a bit agree and a bit disagree. I think we are now in the phase where we have quite a lot of infrastructure being built and not that much on the app layer because you can now see like every single layer two, every single app has a layer two now and we have so much tech around and infrastructure that's ready. But to keep everything short, this is why we picked Eigenlayer, because if you kind of go a few steps back and we wanted to build this platform without Eigenlayer, first we would have to issue some sort of a token and try to go around and pick a couple of operators and tell them like, hey, we are building this blockchain and you have to run our node and we'll reward you with tokens and then we maybe bootstrap some sort of a network that has the problem. But Eigenlayer solves or solved all those problems for us. Because for us, it was much easier to start just on the application layer. So what we said like, okay, if you as uh, Eigenlayer operator node see us as a good platform where you can earn, earn a decent APY, the market will balance this. So what will happen with Eigenlayer is that if our platform makes decent uh, monthly recurring revenue, we will get more and more operators onboarded and they will just do their work. And that, that, that's pretty much it. So we get a full decentralized network. We don't have to build a, uh, our own node or our own uh, specific flavor of, of tech. It's just Eigenlayer managing this entire bridge between solo stakers or enterprise stakers or whatever you call the operators and us. So for us, building an ABS was super smooth and it made really a lot of sense it's pretty much just executing the arbitrary code that we give it and generates a ZK proof on, on top of that. So um, it's, I would say, really a perfect use case of decentralized blockchain technology. And uh, Eigenlayer was a really big component for that. So, so we can actually do? focus on building the product. That's the problem, what I'm trying to say. Like we, the, when you want to build something in blockchain, you actually first have to go and build the blockchain, not the product. And in our case, we could have, we could have immediately started with building the product and not to care that much uh, into what scaling it is or how much TPS or where is the right. problem. We just created the ABS. You, hope, you as Eigenlayer solve all the operator problems and the rewards and so on, but we'll take care of and build a beautiful app on, on top. Yeah, I think we I think we're definitely up to our eyeballs and L2s at this point. And a lot of the L2s that are launching at this at this point in time, for the most part, are not all that much differentiating. We're seeing some app chains, I would call them, or app specific rollups. We're also seeing teams that have uh maybe built a re reputation and, and they want to just maybe launch their own chain and they're trying to explain why it's different and it's a lot of nuance there. And I, I don't get all that excited about some of those. Some of them I do, but maybe not for the most part. But I do think that with the ability to build out these, I would say, just very, very unique verifiable services with Eigenlayer, it does open up kind of like a new developer platform for use cases like yourself, where you don't really need an actual blockchain, sure. uh, a new blockchain, but you do need this unique uh, verification layer for, for your specific product. So it's, exactly. really it's like kind of Apple App Store. You you provide all the users, all the infrastructure, and so on, and we just build the build the app. We have to pay you a bit for it, maybe, but uh, it's it's fine. So um, 
I think it makes sense if uh, if it works out in the end. This has been really great. What what do you think are going to be some of the things that you're working towards over the next uh, six to twelve months with K three? So our main goal is going to be expanding on the list of the templates that we currently have. So currently we support nine or ten templates. We tried to pick all the most frequent and all, all the most fun uh, use cases and put it in templates so that you can like one click deploy them. Uh, but over the next uh, couple of months, we will be working with a lot of our design partners and, and customers to really go, I would say like from nine templates to maybe 30, 40, 50, as you can see, we have different categories on the left. And those will be like financial reporting, security templates, like you saw in where I want to freeze my tokens if something happens, um, wallet monitoring, smart contract monitoring, and in the end, operator and operations uh, type workflows where, for example, if you as a, a company that has a lot of operations, you want to keep track of all your wallets, keep them topped up, keep them synchronized and have good reports on all of that, you can automate this uh, through our platform. So in long, long story short, template and getting a lot more uh, customers because we are just now kind of going out of stealth and we just announced our uh, mainnet uh, with you guys uh, a couple of weeks back or a month back. So now it's going to be really approaching existing clients and expanding a lot more. So I would also invite everybody else that are watching the, this channel, go to k3-labs.com and you can give a try uh, and uh, register. It's free for everybody. Uh, you can uh, log in and use code, I have to get it correct, <laughs> EL main, so together, uh, and you get one month free uh, usage of the platform. So feel free to subscribe and we are really happy to hear your feedback. So it's going to be more getting feedback from people and just building the awesome product because that's why we are here and that's why we are building this to, to, to solve real problems. Amazing. Well, Ivan, I really appreciate your time today. This has been really great. I'm hoping a lot of the people that showed up today learned a lot. Um, if you want to follow K3 Labs on Twitter or on X, they are K3 underscore Labs. Their website is k3-labs.com. And Ivan, what's your handle on Twitter? Do you want people to follow you there as well? It's same as first name and last name. It's Ivan underscore Rife. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter. It's the same on Telegram if you want to spam me there. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, but I'm open to any kind of request, any questions. Feel free to send it over. And uh, I'm happy to jump on a call and... Uh, discuss your specific use case that we can implement on, on our platform. Amazing. Well, thanks for again for your time. Thanks, everyone, for uh, hanging out today. If you missed any part of this, we're going to be posting this on our YouTube channel, and we will be back next week with another Infinite Layers. Thank you for having me, Nathan.